Hello, this is John Smizer, me, and I'm here in Southern California just thinking about the Word of God, thinking about the passages that we have today in living life. And uh, for today's message or the idea that we're talking about, um, you know, I want you to know that it's important what you and I tell a young child. You know, a young child is looking to understand who are they? What are they about? And so often the words that people speak into young people's lives are the impressions that the young person holds on to. And they are told whether they're a good person or a not good person. And it's not always the right thing. So we need to be careful as we speak to children, as we speak to anybody that we're around, because our words are very powerful. And there's something called a script. Uh, the, in, in the movies, they have the script that everybody becomes an actor and they play their part in the script. And so often if someone says a negative thing to a person, that suddenly is the script that they start living out. In, in areas of life, children learn from what they're being told. They're a good person, they're not a good person. It's important, how do we speak into, and what are the words that young people have in their minds as they live their life? I still carry some of the words that people said to me, and so do you. Let's hear the words of God to us today as it's read for us. Psalm 45, 1-17 My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace, since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her, those brought to be with her. Let in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory throughout all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Let's hear and receive the word of God as it's been read for us. Let's apply it to our lives. Our passage today opens up with, My heart is stirred by a noble theme. As I recite my verses for the king, my tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. How do I live this out? What, what does this mean for me? My heart is stirred by a noble theme. Do you have a theme that is working in your mind and heart. The scripture talks about, as a man thinketh, so is he. It also speaks in the New Testament about guarding our heart and mind. 
And it has to do with those things that are said to us. And it has to do with it. Here is some noble theme. I love that. What is it that I meditate on? What are the words or the verses or the things that I hold on to? Well, you know, one of my favorite books is, of course, the book of Romans. Um, chapter 8, as I spoke about uh, a while back, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Or in the chapter 12 about, uh, I urge you therefore, brothers, to present your bodies. And that verse, it's there. Or, or what about John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Those things that I can meditate on and think about and understand, what am I called to be and do? When I look at the issue of Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace I've been saved, you've been saved. Those verses are, are key. But then verse 10 speaks about things that God has prepared for us to be doing. You know, I need to hold on to, yes, I have that salvation grace in my life, but he's also appointed things for me to be doing. Or later in Ephesians, it talks about that there's apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints to do the work of service. That's us. The, the pastors are there to teach us and train us and prepare us for acts of service. And then in Corinthians, it talks about that each of us have been given a bit of grace or charis or a charismatic gift for his service, for the common good. Now see, these are the noble themes that the psalmist spoke about in his day that I hold on to, that help guide my life. And then finally, uh, in, in the book of Revelation, it speaks about, about, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody opens the door, I'll come in and sup with or, or fellowship with or dine with or be in connection with. And then finally, at the latter part of Revelation, that there's no more tears. And when we're in the presence of God, He is that shining light that will illuminate all things for us. Those are, those are themes that I hold on to that the psalmist uh, here, here says, my heart is stirred by noble theme. And that's the thing I want to encourage you to do. Now, a theme that the psalmist here was using has to do down here in verse 7 when it says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Knowing that what God has called on us to do is to observe righteousness, to, to do righteously, to do the right thing with the people around us, and to hate evil. Psalm 139, the psalmist speaks about how we God knows the words before they come out of our mouth. He knows our standing up, our going out, and our coming in. He knows all about us and everything about us. But in the last part of it, 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 there's a portion that says, I hate the very things that you hate, the things that God rejects, I need to reject. So as we examine our conduct, our life, the themes that we hold on to, are there there's areas of righteousness that we take hold of and cling to and become more and more every day? That's what it is to grow in the Lord is to allow those themes to be our script, the script that we live out, our, our understanding of who John is and who you are. You're a person who, in the presence of God, love righteousness and hate wickedness. For us today, I pray those themes stir our hearts.
Blessings on you. At the end of our passage for today, in Psalm 45, verses 16 and 17, I want to draw your attention here where it says, Your sons will take the place of your fathers. It's the idea of from generation to generation. How did my father honor God? How did his father honor God? Now, how do I honor God and my son honor honor God? And how does our grandson take those same ways that what has passed from generation to generation? And in verse 17, it says, I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. So the things I hold, the things that I live out daily, are those things, truths about God that my son watched. Not so much about dad talking about, yep, yep, yep. No, it's what he saw in my life as I was obedient to God. And it brings joy to my heart to see my son taking steps that are reflective of a person who honors God. Let's pray. Lord, today, may we be that light that shines in our world, in our culture, in our community, in our neighborhoods, and in our homes. May we be that light that reflects the person of God the reflection of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for each person today that we are honoring to you, not only with our words, but with our action, that we love righteousness as you do. And may we turn our back on and reject evil in every way in our lives. The sphere of influence where we can help people do the right thing rather than the wrong thing. May we honor you. Give us the strength, Lord. Give us the wisdom and give us the insight by your Holy Spirit. In your Son's precious name, amen.